Hi everyone, so I wanted to show you all of my watercolor supplies because that's one of the mediums I use the most out of anything else. And I've done a lot of trial and error through like which supplies I like the best, which ones are available to me, and what I like to use depending on what kind of illustration I'm doing. And just some like little tools and tips and stuff I picked up along the way. And feel free to also leave me tips that I don't mention here in the comments if there's anything else you think I should know. But I just wanted to show you my personal favorite watercolor tools and palettes and all that kind of stuff. So first I'm just going to start with the actual paint itself. And I think my favorite brand right now is the Shinhan PWC watercolors. They're relatively affordable and they come with a lot of paint in the tube. They're a little bit more um, opaque than other watercolors. I remember someone told me why that was, but I can't quite remember. I think it's like a slightly different type of watercolor. But these are really accessible in my local art stores and that's why I like them. And also because they just work really well and they're super pigmented and they come off the pan really nicely. A couple months ago I actually got some Schmincke Horadam watercolors and um, these are super high quality. I like them a lot. They tend to spread out more than other than these ones. They kind of like have more of a spread to them um, and they're extremely pigmented. There's so many different options for colors for both of these. I think these are both really great watercolors because they just last so long and, and they're relatively easy to find. I get, I get these from Jackson's Art Supplies because their shipping prices are really good to Canada, especially since they live in the UK. I think you can get these on Jackson's Art Supplies as well. There's also Above Ground Art Supplies, which is kind of local to me, and there's Desairs, which is a Canadian store in Curry's, um, and there's always Amazon, but sometimes I find you can't really get like certain colors on Amazon. You can only buy the kits, you can't get individual ones, but I use the Shinhan PWC and the Schmincke Horadam watercolors, those are my two favorites. I don't really like Winsor Newton Cotman at all, to be honest. Like, they, they worked for me for a while, but once I found these and they're pr pretty similar in price, I like these a lot more. I thought I should show you the actual colors that I use from each brand. So, the Schmincke ones, I have Schmincke Violet, Ultramarine, Finest, Dark Blue, Thalo Blue, is it Kina Syndrome, Queen of Syndrome, Magenta, Permanent Red, Burnt Sienna, Sap Green, Thalo Green, Transparent Yellow, and Light Ochre, oh, Yellow Raw Ochre. I actually, I think these two were sent to me, maybe this one as well. Um, one of my patrons sent them to me to try, which was really nice. I also have these Holbein watercolor things that were in a subscription box, and these are more opaque, and the M Gram. Um, white watercolor. I also use white gouache if I want opaque areas. Um, if I need to paint over anything, then I'll use white, but I don't use it in like actually painting washes and stuff. So for the Shinhan, I have cadmium yellow light, burnt umber, permanent red, cobalt blue, ultramarine light, bright rose, horizon blue. I don't use this color much. Viridian Hue, Mineral Violet, and Royal Blue, and all these colors work fine for me. Um, um, it'd be nice to have an orange and a sap green, I think that would be nice to have in this, but these colors work great for me, so I thought it would be um, more useful to you if I actually showed you which colors, which specific colors I had. Another thing that I recently discovered, not really recently, but something that's good to use is a mister to spray onto your palette before you start painting. It's not really mandatory, but it helps kind of get everything all ready to paint. So those are the watercolors I use. Um, another kind of watercolor... I dropped my whole box of watercolor on the carpet. Another type of watercolor I like to use is um, liquid watercolor, which is actually also like these. These are liquid watercolor. Um, they're basically ink, I guess, but they're labeled as liquid watercolor. And these are pretty nice. Um, they're a little bit harder to use because you can't just put them in the pan and have them dry. Like, I did have them dry here, but it's easier to contaminate these because they're liquid. Liquids are just harder to work with because you need, like, a... You need an eyedropper to get it out of the bottle, and they, they're more easy to spill. But these are extremely vivid and bright. If you want a more, like, fluid medium if you like using inks to color stuff these are great because they're watercolor inks and they're extremely concentrated and pigmented and that's what i like about them the most is how pigmented they are and the bottles are actually just like so cute to just have in your collection which i think is really nice so i also recommend the eco line they come in pens too and the newer um models have like 
eyedropper lids, which I also have some of those too. So just a brief break to tell you that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community. There's thousands of different classes you can take in all sorts of categories like illustration, design, business, fine art, all kinds of stuff. The lessons on Skillshare can help you stay inspired, express whatever kind of creativity um, that you might have, and introduce you to a community of millions of other people who are also using Skillshare. If you've been thinking of doing any online learning um, at the moment, and this might be something you want to check out, a class in particular that I really want to watch by one of my favorite Instagram artists, Gabriel Piccolo. He has a character illustration class all about faces, figures, and clothing. Skillshare is made especially for learning and there's always new classes popping up that you can check out. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Actually, this time, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get two months free on Skillshare, so make sure you check that out if this is something you want to do. Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring me. It really helps me out with my channel and everything I'm trying to do. And uh, on with the watercolors. Now I just wanna show you my watercolor palettes. This sounds like something loose in there. This is a Meaden palette. I got it from Amazon. And you can actually put loose pans in there. Um, so I have half pans. I think these are quarter pans. Or these might be full pans, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I bought those from Amazon. They came in this little bag. And you can put the pans in there. This comes with these pans, but um, you can add your own in. Now this is really messy. I believe the paint that's in here right now is the Shinhan ones. Um, this is good for travel because it's pretty small, but I want an even smaller one for travel. Um, but it's just nice though. My only complaint though is that this here just doesn't lie flat. So that's probably why I don't use it a lot because the paint collects down here and it makes it really annoying. I think this one is really old and crusty. Let's see. Will it even open? Okay, yeah, these are Cotman watercolors. I should probably get rid of this or give it away or something because I don't really like Cotman anymore. It takes so long to get it off the palette. Um, I wonder how I could, like what I could do with this. Maybe just clean the paint out and use the palette for something else. These are pretty good palettes. They're easy to find a similar model, but um, I find they're just too small overall. If you're doing something at home, they're better for travel but they're not small enough to be like extremely convenient. Or the, they're just at that weird size where it's not big enough, but not small enough either. Okay, so this is my favorite kind of palette to use. It's pretty big. There's so much space. Um, this is my Schmincke palette. So there's a lot less paint in the pans because you use it up a lot slower. Um, and it's just huge and it has so much space and I think I got this from Desairs, but you can get this kind of palette on Amazon as well. And there's stickers on the front from pat patrons that I pledged to. And I, I liked it so much, I have two. And this is my Shinhan palette. You can see I've recently refilled it. Oh, there's white coming off. I think this is gouache, this white. But I love the, um, I just love this palette. I like to put a lot of the Shinhan paint just because I have so much of it and I use this palette a lot. This little thumb hole, honestly I wish that didn't exist and this was just another mixing area because this is a wasted space to me. I wonder if I could like modify this somehow, I don't know, but overall I do really like this palette. You can even put your brushes here if you wanted to. Another supply that I always forget I have and is super useful is masking fluid. I use the Demco kind. And it's basically, you put it on the paper to block out areas you don't want the current color to go on, and then you peel it off after and it's it dries like a, like a rubbery plastic sort of thing on the paper. You can use like the back of a brush to get it off or an eraser if you want. And a great tip for using this stuff is to put soap on your brush first because this will ruin your brushes. It's so hard to get it out of brushes. I tried to use hand cream to sort of get it out when I don't put enough soap on first. This is brown watercolor, but it looks really, really weird and kind of nasty. Um, but just like soap before you put this on your brush will save your brushes and it will let you use masking fluid. And some people even have masking fluid pens. There's so many things you can do with this. Um, I like the fluid kind because it's kind of tedious to cut out the, the paper type of frisket. 
so that's why I use the liquid masking fluid. You obviously need tape. Um, I don't like to use colored tape like this. I prefer to use um, more of like a tan masking tape because it's more of a neutral color because I find this interferes with what I'm painting. I like it to be to not um, clash against the painting, I guess. But I'll use this if it's the only thing I have, of course. Another palette I have that was sent to me by the company is the Etcher uh, Mini Palette, so their porcelain palette. I haven't really um, traveled much, so I haven't got a chance to use this, but it's one of my favorite things I have because it's just so cute. Okay, I finally got it open. Um, I think I used the lid as a gouache palette, but you can put um, your individual watercolor colors in here. Yeah, I use that as a gouache palette. Um, and you can use this to mix, and it's just good for traveling, except for I'm worried it's gonna break. I kinda want it to be plastic, but the porcelain is really nice too. It, it feels too precious to take with me, even though it's like made for traveling. So for brushes, um, a brand I found that just works really well for me is the Zen Royal and Langnickel brand of brushes. Um, they come in all different sizes and I like this one for big washes. This one has been missing for a long time but I finally found it. I have yet to find a brush that holds up really well, like a small um, brush that comes to a point because I tend to buy cheaper brushes. Like these are pretty on the, on the cheap end. They're usually like $3 a brush or 4, 4 or $5. I have this one that is, I it feels like, like actual hair, but I'm not sure of the brand because it peeled off. It was only $2.59 though, so I don't know. It's probably synthetic. I have this one as well. I use this brush roll up to put my brushes in. I have tons of these really, really thin brushes that were pretty cheap off of Amazon, um, but it's because I don't want to spend a lot of money on brushes because I know one day I will leave them sitting in like paint and then they'll get ruined so i just use um fairly inexpensive brushes and they work well for me my favorite paper is the arches or arch uh watercolor paper it's hot pressed the 140 pound pad of paper it's really nice for doing watercolor and then doing other stuff on top because the surface is extremely smooth um, and it just takes paper really well. I love this paper. But if you're looking for something cheaper that is actually really good as well is the um, Canton XL. This is my go-to paper. This is Canton XL watercolor paper. Um, I think this was, this was like only $15 and there's tons inside. It might have been even less. But this is my go-to paper for doing bigger illustrations and anything that's going to be mixed media and watercolor because it just works really well. I don't understand how this can be so cheap and like work really well for the price. It doesn't look as nice as this paper when you're painting with watercolor, it just doesn't... Like if you're doing a purely watercolor painting, this would probably be a better choice. But if you're going to do other media on top of it, then this is also a good choice as well. And that's pretty much all I use for watercolor, but when I'm like actually doing paintings, I'll use pencil crayon to put stuff to color on top of it. Cause I'm a very mixed media kind of person. I can't just do one media. It has to be different ones because I need different types of marks. It can't just be all watercolor. I need like opaque areas and um, more energetic lines, which I can't really do that well with paint. So I really hope you found that useful just to see all this, the watercolor stuff that I use. I've been wanting to make this video because I get a lot of questions about brushes and paint and paper and all that stuff. So this is going to be a good video to refer to if you ever want to know what specifically I actually use for watercolor. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope you are keeping yourself busy in these times and I'll see you in my next video.